So, here we are on the last synth effect for this 7 day song. It grew up so fast. Okay, start with a combinator. I've got one here, but I'm just going to initialize it, so we'll make it from scratch. And then name it... Or it, it, if you can't spell that, just call it pitch drop synth. Inside it, make a line mixer 6 to 2 and a Thor instance. I'm just going to solo this out so we can hear it as it builds up. Now, initialize it, open it up, and listen carefully. This is a pretty complicated patch, even more complicated than that sub bass we did earlier. Set the analog oscillator a couple of octaves higher. This will be the punchiness of the sound, but for the thickness, we're going to add a multi oscillator on interval detune mode, since that's slightly cleaner sounding than the random one, and detune to about 44. This time, we're going to take it up three octaves and run it through with the two button there. Turn the filter one frequency to full, since we're going to be modulating this later, and turn the E and V value to zero so the filter envelope doesn't have any effect on it. Next, add in a state variable, HP high pass filter there, with zero E and V again, so that doesn't have any effect, and turn the frequency and the resonance to about three quarters of the way around, so that's about 350 hertz there. But again, this will be modulated. Turn the sustain up to full so it doesn't lose any volume over time. And turn on the chorus. A little bit drier than normal. Just so it's still got a little bit of punch. Now, let's take a listen to it. See, it sounds like a generic synth noise at the moment, but we'll soon change that. We're going to use LFO1 to modulate the pitch of the effect quite fast. Then LFO2 to modulate a few things to make the pitch of both oscillators steadily go down, to make the rate of LFO1 decrease over time, and to slightly modulate the high pass filter to allow more of the low end through as the sound progresses. Now it sounds complicated, but let's do it step by step and show you the effects one by one. First, the LFO1 modulation. Run LFO1 as the source to oscillator one and two pitch. So oscillator one pitch and destination two, Oscillator 2 pitch. By minus 100 on one and minus 60 on the other. By keeping them different, that will make a more unusual sound as the synths are detuned from each other repeatedly. And as you can see here, you can route one source to two destinations on the right, where you'd have to use two lines here on the left. So it's quite cool to do on the right. So let's take a listen to that now. Now that sounds like a siren, but we want it a little bit faster than that, so let's take the rate of LFO1 up to about 21 hertz. There. Sounds like some sort of deranged underwater lawnmower. Now, set LFO2 to the tempo sync mode, so it's in time with the music, and set the rate as slow as possible, which will be 4 to 1. This means every 4 bars it will loop the effect. So be sure to trigger the effect in the sequencer on the first bar of a 4 bar loop, or it won't sound right. Set it to the ramp waveform, which is number 3. The first one is number 0, so you're going to have to click 3 times to get to it. Root LFO2 to both oscillators, pitches, by minus 100 on both. Let's take a listen to it now. Cool, huh? The effect is getting there. Now, we're going to make LFO2 change the rate of LFO1. So, LFO2 source, amount, minus 70-ish, and the destination, we're going to go for LFO1 rate. Since LFO1 is not tempo synced, it can have any rate assigned, meaning a steady decrease will be achieved, with a really fast modulated start, and then it'll get slower as the sound progresses. So check that out. Pretty cool, huh? Lastly, down here, add in the filter 3 frequency as destination 2. Filter 3 frequency. To be modulated by about minus 25-ish, about minus 30, that'll do, by LFO2. And this just cuts off the low end until the low end is there, focusing the sound a little bit. Another thing you might want to try before you abandon the mod bus routing section is using LFO2 as a scale value of these pitches on the first line. So we change scale to LFO2 and take a listen without. 
and take a listen when we take the amounts to minus 100. This pretty much says that the higher LFO2 is, the lower the pitch will be, forcing the pitch to rise inexorably into the air where owls can carry it to your ears. Okay, so we have our effect, and now it's time to make it even more mental with one thing from the M-Class Suite, as well as some reverb and delay. So firstly, from the M-Class Suite, we're going to right click and create an M-Class Stereo Imager. This is going to push the sound further to the edges of the stereo spectrum where we want, and closer to the middle where we don't. So turn the high band up about three quarters of the way around, and the low band to about a quarter towards the mono. This will widen up the high end nicely and tighten up the low end similarly nicely. Next, right click on the mixer at the top here and create DDL1 digital delay line. Turn the feedback up to about 100, just so it's got quite a long decay time, and run about half of the aux value on channel one where it's going through, so we can hear a decent amount of it. Now let's take a listen. There, you can hear it fading out a little bit more, rather than stopping dead. So it's getting there. Last step is the reverb, so we're going to add an RV7000 instance into the chain after that DDL1. Change the preset to all the met. If we have a look in the EQ section down here, which is turned on for this preset, we can see that it's boosting the high end here, about 4 kilohertz, uh, by about 10 decibels, meaning the high end reverb will be much more prominent. So if we turn the high frequency damp down a little bit, about to a quarter-ish, something like that, that'll make it even more prominent. Take one last listen to our home-baked effect. Mmm, delicious. We should cook more often. Okay, so today I've taught you how to structure a conventional bassline song like a pro, add some effects to fill out the track like a fat chick in a Japanese train, and a pitch drop synth crazier than a Justin Bieber fangirl. Tune in for day 7 where I'll go over mixing, where I'll be including a little section on vocals, for this track I'll be adding in some nice and cheesy lyrics to accompany the nice and cheesy music, mastering, and then playing you the final finished 7 day bassline song. Exciting times, huh? Until then, see what crazy effects you can make drop into your track. See you next time, guys. If you found this tutorial useful, help me out by rating this video or posting a comment so other people can find it. And don't forget to check out my website, boyinaband.com. Have a nice day.